There's a clear path to a fully sustainable Earth uh, with abundance. It's not news that Elon Musk is propelling us toward the future with inspiring, sustainable technology. As an ultra-successful entrepreneur, he clearly understands that where there's a problem, there's money to be made. And the environmental problem, that's a big one. Elon Musk might be a big spokesperson for the environmental revolution, but don't forget that there are plenty of others who prefer to work in the shadows. In 2019, a humble and to the world unknown man walked out of the car manufacturer Volkswagen headquarters and his hand was a notepad with a 900 million euro deal scribbled in it. This deal was the start of the largest green transformation in Europe's history. Meet Harold Mix, a nervous, introverted man from the small kingdom of Sweden. Harold risked almost everything to transform not only one, but multiple fossil-based industries, all to achieve a grand personal goal of lowering global emissions by 1% through his companies. This is the story of how one man proved that with a strong will, the right people, and a great business incentive, it's possible to change entire industries, even if you're from a small country like Sweden. First time ever. Global warming has exceeded 1.5 degrees Celsius for an entire year. The environmental crisis isn't just a distant warning. It's a real shift in our world's natural balance, and it's driven by human activity. From the continuously updated iPhones in our hands to the constructions of our cities, almost every aspect of our modern life contributes to the environmental problem. World leaders in the World Economic Forum have consistently ranked climate change as the most pressing issue facing humanity. The impacts of climate change are far-reaching. They threaten food security, increase the frequency of natural disasters, and disrupt the delicate ecosystems that many species, including humans, depend on for survival. In the 1970s, the steel, coal, and oil industries were running hot. World War II had ended long ago, and the governments focused their economies on raising living standards for their people. At the same time, it was the middle of the Cold War, when the tensions between the USA and the Soviet Union was rising. With a race to develop and produce ever more sophisticated weapons and war technologies, as living standards increased, no one was thinking about whether all of our emissions could be harming our planet somehow. Well, no one except the scientists. Scientists have been warning us since the 1950s, the ocean wasn't capable of absorbing all our industrial fuel emissions, and carbon dioxide was increasing in the atmosphere. But people didn't bother listening to them, because life was improving, right? So, in the 1970s, no one cared. Not even Harold Mix. When we meet Harold, he's about 12 years old. He has a humble childhood in Falun, Sweden. When he's not in school, he's delivering newspapers and shuffling coal to increase his weekly allowance to fund his childhood adventures. Our coal, dust-covered, soon-to-be climate hero would follow his destiny to the USA, where he would earn a bachelor's degree in science at Brown and an MBA from Harvard Business School. He graduated as a Baker Scholar, which is only awarded to the top 5% of the class. He attributed his excellent performance to his photographic memory which makes it very easy for him to remember numbers and facts. For Harold, it's now time to not only study money, but to make money. A lot of money. He's going to work in management consulting, and later, starts his own private equity firm, Industry Capital, which today has raised over 14 billion euros. Then, he created Altor, which now manages around 11 billion euros. But Harold Mix has not started making moves for the environment. Not yet. It will require a great opportunity to get him started. As a venture, capitalist, and businessman who's been in the game for a long time, Harold Mix is obviously well-connected. After a successful investment in a lead battery company, he's approached by the same founder to invest in lithium-ion battery technology. An opportunity, and perhaps, a new mindset emerges. It's 2014 and Harold unites with his partners to investigate the potential of a new battery company this company would build and sell a new type of battery. The battery would provide smart, sustainable, and cost-effective reserve power for the telecom industry. But they're missing one piece, an effective CEO who knows the telecom industry. Not a problem. Harold is introduced to Carl Eric Lagerkrantz, who works in the telecom industry, 
It's the final piece for the new battery company, and also the foundation for another company, a holding company. This news holding company will accelerate the sustainable transition in Europe, making it faster than ever before. This new holding company is named Vargas. With the formation of Vargas, investment flows into a lithium-ion company named Polarium. Polarium smart lithium-ion batteries turn out to be a smart bet, and the company ends up growing at an incredible pace, with a compound annual growth rate of 150%. With new money in their pockets, Harold Mix and Vargas adopt an ambitious goal. With more knowledge, more experience, and more money than almost anyone on Earth, they vow to make an impact with their companies. So big that, combined, they will reduce global emissions by 1%. Now, before we move on, it's not clear what drives Harold Mix. It may be a new grandoise challenge, the money to be made, or a deep desire to do good. We can't know for sure, but something gets his gears turning, and they turn fast, really fast. Seizing a great business opportunity can be hard if you don't know how to spot it. Many don't, but training yourself how to spot them isn't impossible and listening to a story about how others did it helps you to do just that. That's why we, and hundreds of thousands, love Audible. For just a few dollars or euros a month, you get listening access to books and stories that can make a commute less boring, change your perspective on a subject, or show you opportunities you would otherwise miss. Sign up for a 30-day free listening trial using our link below in the description. During a board meeting at their new sustainable battery company, Polarium, a realization strikes Harold Mix and his colleagues. We're now building batteries, but the majority of Europe's batteries production is located in Asia, where they lack access to both the raw material and green energy. During the meeting, they imagine a world where Europe no longer leans on Asia for its battery needs, especially when the production of those batteries emits a frightening amount of carbon emissions. They know that the market will literally be screaming for more batteries and battery factories with the increasing demand for electric vehicles, but the current battery factories are quite unsustainable. They spot the potential to get closer to their goal of reducing global emissions by 1%. Where there's a problem or a need, there's money to be made. The need for batteries and the problem of climate change, they're two big ones. So. Would it be possible to build green battery factories that could supply the European market? Could they be the ones to develop, build, and sell the world's greenest lithium-ion battery? This would not only be a unique selling proposition, it would also make a positive contribution to the environmental problem. Therefore, it would push the entire battery industry to adapt to the new standard. But would it be possible? Mix and his team set out to investigate the business opportunity. And who better to talk to than the guys over at Tesla? So they contacted two former Tesla executives and got the reply that yes, it can be done. And yes, they would like to join them in making it happen. Great, but where to build the initial factory? After an initial review of Sweden's potential to host and run a factory of this kind, they concluded that Sweden has A, sufficient material resources from nearby mines, B, sufficient green power from its wind and rivers, and C, a political landscape in favor investing in such an initiative. As a result, they estimated that theoretically, they could deliver batteries with a 90% lower carbon footprint compared to those made in Asia using coal energy. Therefore, in 2016, the Swedish government granted a 3 million euro loan to do a pre-study for a battery factory, and the company, which would come to be known to the world as Northvolt, has launched. You'd think it'd be easy to gain momentum from there, but you'd be wrong. It turned out that a factory of this kind would cost about 3 billion euros, or about 1,000 times more than their loan, and require multiple approvals from environmental departments, municipalities, politicians, and more. From this point on, the challenge would be to achieve as many small wins as possible, to move on to the next stage, and level of funding for the project. Over two years, factory and battery prototypes were built to show the feasibility of the technology. Environmental permits were approved, and municipalities agreed to invest in developing the surrounding infrastructure needed for the factory. Customers were even committing to purchasing the batteries as soon as the factory was built. All of which would prove to investors that green batteries were not just a dream, but a viable business opportunity. But despite the massive business potential and solid business case, 
acquiring funding for the project was like navigating a maze. Even though there were nods of approval and admiration for the project, investors were hesitant and would say the same thing. Incredible project, impressive customer list, incredible team, but we don't know how it'll fit into our portfolio. It would take a 300 million euro loan from the European Investment Bank to trigger a call and an urgent meeting request from Volkswagen. After the urgent meeting request, Harold Mix immediately flew down and walked into a meeting with the top executives of Volkswagen. They had assessed their situation and concluded that they would need green batteries to meet their environmental targets, a lot of them. In June 2019, in one meeting, a major milestone was achieved, marking a great upswing for the future of Northvolt. At this meeting, Volkswagen and Northvolt decided to partner up. Northvolt will supply sustainable batteries for Volkswagen's electric cars to help them reach their environmental targets. Volkswagen becomes the largest customer and a significant minority owner of Northvolt. The deal says that Volkswagen will invest 900 million euros for 20% ownership and a seat on the board. And then, Northvolt really took off. Today, Northvolt has factories in more than six locations. They focus on producing lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles, EVs, energy storage, and industrial applications. The Northvolt facilities use renewable energy from Sweden's abundant natural power from hydro, wind, and solar, which makes the batteries the greenest on the planet. The factories are committed to a circular economy and plan to source 50% of their batteries from recycled materials by 2030. This approach reduces the need for new raw materials and lessens the ecological footprint of the batteries. Northvolt's factory stands as a symbol of how environmental responsibility and economic growth can coexist. It shows how large-scale sustainable manufacturing is possible, leading the way toward a future where technology and environmental sustainability go hand in hand. This facility is not just a site for producing batteries. It represents a step toward a cleaner, greener future. As Northvolt's groundbreaking venture into sustainable battery production gained momentum, the team, led by the ever-innovative Harold Mix, turned their eyes to another heavy contributor to the environmental issue, the steel industry. With demand for electric vehicles on the rise, they understood that sustainability couldn't stop at batteries. After all, each car requires about a ton of steel, which, in turn, emits two tons of CO2 contributing to the steel industry's hefty 8% share of global CO2 emissions. The spark for change ignited during a board meeting in October 2020, amidst discussion on Volkswagen's strategy to meet the Paris Agreement targets. It became crystal clear, green car batteries alone weren't enough. The materials they were made from needed to be sustainable too, but the pace at which steel suppliers were moving toward green steel was frankly glacial. The idea of H2 Steel was born from the ambition to not just nudge but leapfrog into the future of steel manufacturing. H2 Steel wasn't just about making steel, it was about reinventing it for the 21st century using the abundant power of hydrogen, H2, derived from water, H2O, and tapping into the Nordic country's abundance of natural energy from its wind and rivers. This green energy could replace coal. Mix's mission for Vargas was bold and clear to revolutionize steel production in the same way that Tesla revolutionized the car industry. The launch of H2 Steel would be a statement to the world that the steel industry could be both sustainable and profitable, but the challenge was daunting. They needed about 5 billion euros. The business deal behind H2 Steel was compelling. It promised great profitability, leveraging economies of scale, modern production technology, and high productivity. But with every venture, there are risks. Mix and Vargas effectively reduced these risks, thanks to the use of known technologies and by signing customers ahead of building the factory. With orders already amounting to 10 billion euros from the world's leading producers, including Europe's leading car and truck manufacturers, H2 Steel was on solid ground. The supply risk was virtually none, because Sweden is the biggest iron ore exporter in Europe. The business case for the green steel revolution was clear, but one thing remained. Would the world's investors support such an initiative? Time quickly passed. Filled with emails, meetings, and location visits, less than a year after the idea's inception, at a board meeting in 2020, the case was now clear. Venture capital from leading institutions would cover 2 billion euros of the needed funds, 
while international banks and institutions would cover the remainder. The impact of the birth of H2 Steel was immediate and profound. Other steel-producing competitors like SSAB immediately accelerated their own green targets to avoid falling behind, moving them from 2045 to 2030. A new factory is currently being built, with customers such as Porsche expressing interest in green steel. H2 Steel's effort alone are projected to avoid 0.3 billion tons of CO2 emissions by 2040, which is roughly 1% of current annual man-made emissions. The story of H2 Steel is more than just a tale of innovation. It's a beacon of hope. It proves that with determination, collaboration, and a visionary approach, the industrial giants of the world can indeed pivot towards sustainability. As Harold Mix aptly put it, if there is a will, there is a way. As the successes with Polarium, Northvolt, and H2 Steel kept rolling in, Harold Mix would have been quite entitled to sit back and enjoy the fruits of his labor. But for Mix and Vargas, this was not the end. It was only the beginning of his journey. And for them, the transition to a greener future wasn't happening fast enough. Mix realizes that green batteries were mostly targeting new products. The inception of H2 Steel was great, but changing the environmental targets and processes of the entire steel industry would take several years. So Mix and his team started analyzing emissions data to find the elephants in the room. While analyzing the data, it gradually became evident that Europe's technology for heating buildings was severely outdated, which had a severe impact on the environment. In most European countries, heating buildings caused almost twice as much emissions as all cars combined. This, Mix thought, could be a business opportunity that could lead to an even faster transition to a greener future. But what could they do to update Europe's heating technology? And why hadn't anyone done it already? This thinking birthed ERA, encapsulating Mix's belief that environmental sustainability and profitability are not mutually exclusive, but rather complementary forces driving the future of green technology. ERA's mission was ambitious, yet clear. Revolutionize heating across Europe by replacing fossil-based systems with something more sustainable. Completely new technologies aren't always needed. Sometimes more sustainable options will do. In this case, heat pumps presented a solution offering four times the efficiency of gas boilers. Unfortunately, the adoption of heating pumps was stifled by high investment costs and a lack of awareness. This is where ERA could come in, enabling a massive win for both homeowners and the environment. Europe's emissions could be drastically reduced while helping homeowners to save up to 50% on heating costs. ERA's model was both simple and holistic. It pieced together known technologies to develop a solution that was both easy and affordable for the customer. The solution was simple. Combine electric heat pumps with solar panels on the roof and batteries to store the electricity that wasn't being used by the heat pump. Simple and smart, but not cheap. This was the core of the issue. The technology was available, but it would generate saving for households and significantly reduce emissions. But the majority of households couldn't afford it. Expert level business jujitsu was needed to solve this on a larger scale. ERA thought that if homeowners couldn't afford to purchase the systems, could ERA perhaps purchase the systems and lend them to the homeowners instead? ERA did the math and it added up. They introduced a subscription model for heating, allowing customers to pay a monthly fee rather than bearing the full cost up front. The subscription included not just the equipment, heat pumps, solar panels, and eventually batteries, but also covered installation, maintenance, repairs, and component replacements for a period of 10 years but they didn't stop there. ERA also worked closely with governments in key markets to make it even cheaper for homeowners by leveraging state-funded incentives and grants. For example, in Great Britain, homeowners could benefit from 7,500 pound grants to lower heating costs and reduce CO2 emissions. In Germany, the state would fund up to 70% of the investment cost, while in Italy, tailored solutions were offered with zero down payment alongside the advantage of the Italian Eco Bonus, which provides substantial tax deductions for energy efficiency improvements. By deploying Vargas Capital for large-scale production and installation capabilities and tapping into governmental incentives, ERA not only reduced the financial burden on consumers, 
but also made the transition to a more sustainable heating system, straightforward and appealing. This strategic approach enabled homeowners to upgrade their heating technology without the need for upfront investment, making green heating solutions accessible and affordable to a wider audience. Looking ahead, ERA plans to expand into more than 20 markets and serve 5 million European homes with greener, cost-effective heating solutions by 2030. They will employ 10,000 clean energy experts and retrain former gas heater experts to work with this new technology. As ERA unfolds its plan, it hopes to inspire more competitors to accelerate the green transition. It also aims to inspire a domino effect across industries, driving Europe and the world to a more sustainable future. As this tale comes to its end, it's important to highlight some of the foundational pillars that helped turn Harold Mix's dream into reality. Central to this story is the EU's Fit for 55, part of the European Green Deal, which aims to reduce emissions by 55% by 2030. Governmental policies, so-called rules of capitalism, help ventures like Northvolt, H2 Steel, and Era Bloom, setting the stage for a greener future. In comparing Elon Musk and Harold Mix, we see a shared vision but different scopes. Both use their resources to challenge old norms, but Mix's influence is broader, touching a wider diversity of sectors with a single goal, a sustainable future. Looking forward, the future of tech and business innovation is promising. Mix's ventures, a blend of green technology and business acumen, aim to drive society towards sustainability faster. By seeding green business models, he challenges the market to adapt or perish showing that care for the environment and economic growth can coexist. This journey towards sustainability is a shared one, requiring courage and action. Mix's work serves as a beacon, guiding others toward making impactful choices. His message is clear. The path to a sustainable future is built on bold dreams and actions, a testament to the power of entrepreneurial spirit and risk-taking to shape a better world for us all. Hey. We hope you liked this video. It was based on an audio story from and about Harold Mix. Finding great stories that are both entertaining and educational can be quite hard. That's why we, and hundreds of thousands of others, love Audible. It's a vast library of books in audio format and other stories that can get you laughing, inspired, or even smarter. Sign up for a 30-day free listening trial using our link below in the description. Thank you for watching. Stay great, and we'll see you in the next one.